Okay, now let's take a look at the payback method. Um, I think I might do the payback method uh, by itself, and then we'll do accounting rated return next and do some problems in between. So payback is just the length of time to recover the, the cost of the capital outlay. And with these problems, you can only have like one cost like on day one. It's not like you pay so much in year one and then you've got to pay another 60000 in year three. Okay, so there'll just be one amount. And it measures how quickly managers expect to recover the dollars. And the shorter the payback period is, the more attractive it is just because less things can happen in, in between. So we've got two different kinds of, of problems that come in here. There are some with equal net cash flows. Those are really straightforward. And then there are some with unequal cash flows. So this company is considering a potential investment in an energy efficient AC system that's expected to cost 240000 It has an estimated useful life of six years, no residual value, and equal net cash energy savings of $60,000. So they're reducing their electric bill, say, by $60,000 a year. So we can say this net energy cash savings is like an expected annual cash inflow. Okay? So the payback period itself is the investment divided by the cash inflow. So $240,000 divided by $60,000. It'll pay for itself in four years. Here's another example. The, the same company is considering a potential investment and development of a business-to-business -business portal. It has estimated useful life of three years, no residual, and equal annual net cash savings of eighty thousand. So you would take your initial investment, two hundred and forty thousand, divided by the eighty thousand dollars. It'll pay for itself in three years. Okay. So those are, are those are straightforward. Here's another way to look at it on, a, on just a chart. And what you can do is you can add up the accumulated savings and it proves, you know, that it's four years here. With the $80,000 one, it's three years. But we don't really have to do this. You can just take the investment and divide it by the um, annual inflow. Now let's look at one with unequal net cash inflows. So this is a potential investment in new equipment. It has an estimated... Uh, useful life of six years, no residual, and unequal net cash savings as shown below. So I've got an annual net cash inflow, right? And it changes. First 100000 the first year, then 80000 Then it's going to level off to 50000 for a while. And then um, it'll be 30000 okay? So if I do, there's my first 100000 so my accumulated cash inflow is 100000 plus another 80, it's 180, plus another 50, it's 230, plus another 50, it's 280, okay? And right there, you can see we've gone over our um, 240,000, okay? So, so what are we going to do with that? What we're going to do is take the amount to complete recovery, like we've got three full years, okay? And then we've got $10,000 left, divide it by $50,000 to make up, okay? That's how much we have left. Let me put that back up here. All right, so our investment is 240. We've got to 230, and then we're 10 into, we've, oh, we've got another 50,000 inflow. Ten thousand three to three point two. Oh, the amount to complete the recovery. Let's go back. Oh yeah, yeah. Wait a minute. So we're at two thirty. We only need another ten thousand. Okay. So we are. We need ten, ten fiftieths. Okay. So that's three years. That's two tenths of a year to recover that last ten thousand dollars. Okay. And then you can get a bunch of investments, and we've got, you know, three different investments here uh, three with a three-year payback, 3.2 years, four years. You know, you can compare these things, but they're all pretty close, and they're not going to make a real difference in, in helping you make a decision for this. Okay, 
And what it's criticized for is that it only focuses on time, okay, not on profitability. And it's not bad because time is risk. Okay, look what happened this year. Um, it only considers cash flows during the payback period. It ignores cash flows after that. And it ignores the residual value. If something is worth something at the end of its life, it's just completely ignored. Okay? So what, what the um, payback period says is that anything with a shorter life is more desirable. Okay, let's do some problems. <clears throat> 